The expansiveness of Texas defines the state. Land in all directions and all manner of land that needs cultivation. Much of Texas's early agricultural wealth was achieved through the institution of slavery. It takes many hands to bring in crops, especially the big cash crop, cotton. Only about 6% of enslaved people in Texas did not belong to farmers or planters. Most field hands worked sun to sun, five days a week, and half a day on Saturday. After emancipation, the plantation owner and the freedmen both faced a crisis. How would they survive without working the land? A new system fell into place very quickly, sharecropping, also known as tenant farming. By working a portion of the land, the freedmen could keep some of the crops and rent a place to live. But getting ahead was difficult, and the tenant farmer often found himself essentially enslaved again. The Levi Jordan Plantation site in Brazoria offers insight into the troubling transition between slavery and tenant farming. But some formerly enslaved people found the means to buy their own land and establish self-sufficient farms and communities. One can be found outside Crockett in Germany community, where a group of former slaves obtained land patents. By 1900, 31% of African American farmers owned their own land, often as part of the freedmen's settlements. Texas ranching and cowboying has been practiced by African Americans since the early 19th century when enslaved people rode the trail and later ran their own herds. Today, Texas boasts many African American owned ranches, often run by the same family for generations, such as the Stevenson family outside Houston. Long renowned for preserving the story of multicultural cowboys in Texas, the Stevensons also preserved the story of cowgirls, as two members of the family have been named to the Cowgirl Hall of Fame.